following portion of Daytime Blue Ridge is sponsored by... It is a national memorial that tells the story of the invasion of Normandy on June 6, 1944. It is located here in Bedford, Virginia, a community that suffered the highest per capita losses than any other community in the nation. This is the National D-Day Memorial. Crusade, one that would eventually change the course of World War II, but not before thousands of lives were lost. And it's here in Bedford where visitors can take a beautiful and symbolic journey that tells the story of that fateful day and honors those who were lost. It was designated by Congress as a national monument. I met up with the memorial president, April Cheek Messier, to take a tour. April, I can't believe I haven't been here before. I'm excited to take a tour. Absolutely. We have so much to show you. Our first stop was here to the sculpture entitled Homage. A symbolic tribute to those communities who saw their loved ones leave and never return. We like to bring people here because everybody has that question. Why is the National DA Memorial here in Bedford, Virginia? So we bring them here to talk about the Bedford Boys and their significance on D-Day. Uh, the Bedford Boys were part of Company A of the 116th Infantry Regiment of the 29th Division. And they would be the first and, and only National Guard unit to go in on the first wave on D-Day. 26 Bedford Boys would actually land on the actual beach on D-Day. And of those 26, 19 from Company A were killed almost within the first 15 minutes. Wow. Another one from Company F was killed. So 20 from Company A, which is why Congress uh, decided that Bedford, Virginia was a very appropriate place to put the nation's monument to D-Day. The memorial is laid out chronologically to tell the story of every aspect of D-Day. The English garden in the shape of the shafe insignia represents the planning of the invasion. Here you see the rainbow yes. off the top, uh, the sword there in the center, uh, representing, very symbolic. And that patch was actually designed by General Eisenhower himself, who saw D-Day as the Great Crusade. Um, it was such an important event. And so uh, you see our arched rainbow representing all the different nations that were part of the invasion itself. The busts of General Eisenhower's commanders surround the garden. At its base, a full-figure bronze statue of General Eisenhower, which stands beneath a tiled battle map of the invasion plan. And what I love about the photograph that this is taken from, and this sculpture in particular, is that it looks as if he's giving some grand war speech just on the eve of the battle. Right. Um, but he's not. He's walking up to each soldier and saying, where are you from, soldier? And this one soldier responds, I'm from Michigan, sir. And he says, oh, great fly fishing in Michigan. Such a great story that really captures who General Eisenhower was. A man who loved his troops and knew what a huge sacrifice many of them were about to make. You get a sense of that sacrifice and how difficult the invasion really was here at the Gray Plaza. This is probably the most powerful part of the memorial. You can see our Higgins boat with the ramp down, the troops coming off, waist deep in the water. Most of them were carrying 75 to 100 pounds of equipment. Incredibly difficult over a wide open beach. The Germans are firing at them the entire time. It's a miracle any of them really survived. The names of those who didn't survive are listed along the memorial wall. A list of not only the American soldiers, but also allied troops. A list that took researchers at the memorial over a decade to compile. This invasion turned the tide of the war and led the way to victory, which is represented at Overlord Arch. But from here, you can see the word Overlord mm -hmm. uh, inscribed on both sides. And that was the code name for the invasion of German-occupied France on D-Day. So Operation Overlord. And the, the arch itself is just representative of, of victory. In Roman times, uh, there was usually a victory arch when the Roman troops came back home and there was a victory. They marched under the arch. And mm -hmm. so it's a very powerful symbol um, of victory. You will no doubt be moved by what you experienced during your tour here. I found it not only educational, 
personal but also an overwhelming emotional experience. A historical journey that volunteer and former World War II veteran Hayden Furrow feels honored to tell. And to be able to tell them some firsthand experiences with, with some of it, uh, I feel good about just being able to do that. I count it a blessing to do that. There's been times when I wonder as I go through it, say, why am I here talking about it? A lot of guys I'm with are not here. They won't be. But uh, I'm here. Why? Of course, you don't have an answer to that. And there are many events coming up at the memorial, including the 72nd D-Day anniversary, where beginning at 1230, for the first time ever, they will stage a public reading of the names of all 2,499 American soldiers who lost their lives during the Normandy invasion. Find out more at dday.org.